Hello and welcome to the discussion of lecture number two, which is basically the design of custom single purpose processes. So we already had a discussion about single purpose processes, right? What are single purpose processes? They perform one specific algorithm, right? So basically they are designed for one particular algorithm. So of course they are most optimized because they are performing <coughs> one single purpose. Now, if the single purpose processor is available off the shelf and you do not need to develop the single purpose processor, for example, you might have a USB 3 processor which is available, right. So, if you have a single purpose processor which is available, fine that is good, you can use a SPP off the shelf. But of course, if you have certain proprietary or special algorithm that you want to develop the single purpose processor for, you would have to develop the SPP yourself and such SPP would be called as custom single purpose processors. Now what is in the outline of this current lecture, we will first have an introduction, then we will have a discussion about combinational logic and its design, afterwards sequential logic and its design. Then of course, we will look at the custom single purpose processor design and we will also take a look at register transfer level custom single purpose processor design. So, as an introduction, a processor is a digital circuit that performs a computation task and as we have discussed before, all processors consist of two parts, the controller and the data path. <coughs> so, what do general purpose processor do? they do a variety of computation tasks, hence they are general in nature, for example, the microcontroller. On the other hand, single purpose processor are designed for one particular computation task and by one particular computation task, it can be a specialized algorithm. And then what is a custom single purpose processor? Non-standard task. If you have some of your special tasks that is not standard task. For example, if USB 3 was available, you want to develop your own standards USB 5. So, USB 5 would be your custom single purpose design because it is not available. So, a custom single purpose processor may be fast, small, low power, but high energy right and lower ta time to market, longer time to market and less flexible. So, this is an example of a non-standard task if JPEG codec is not available right. So, first of all, we look at the basic building block which is the transistor and CMOS complementary metal oxide semiconductor transistor on silicon. So, it is the basic component digital systems and it acts as an on off switch. It can work as an amplifier and it can also work as an on off switch. So, in electronics, in computer electronics, we use it as an on off switch. So, voltage at gate controls whether current flows from source to drain. So, this is basically the source, this is the drain and this is the gate. It is basically an FET arrangement, field effect transistor arrangement, right. And all these transistors are packed into this IC which is placed over here and this is basically the IC package. Common examples are DIP, dual in line package. So, we can have examples like DIP 8, DIP 14 and DIP 16 and so on and so forth. So, when you apply voltage, current flows from the source to the drain and this is the symbol, right? So, what are the implementations of Siemens transistors? It is complementary metal oxide semiconductor like I stated before. So, we will refer to logic level 0 would be 0 volt and 1 would be 5 volts. <coughs> Two flavors are there NMOS and PMOS. NMOS conducts if gate equals 1. So, if we apply 1 to the gate, the NMOS conducts and PMOS conducts if gate is 0, right. So, hence we have the complementary, right. Now, we have the basic gates which is the inverter, NAND or NOR gates. 
So, basically this simple is the inverter, then we can have the NAND gate right, but the output would be the NAND of the inputs which are the inputs right and we can have the NOR gate. So, the basic implementations of inverter, NAND and NOR gate can all be implemented using this CMOS transistors right. So, uh, like we studied in digital logic design right, it is very economical to manufacture circuits using this trans, uh, transistor logic because any kind of logic element inverter, NAND gate or NOR gate can be implemented only using these types of and either NMOS or PMOS logic. So, these are the basic logic gates and their two tables, they are self explanatory, they are giving us the basic functions and how the output is, is a function of the inputs to this gate right. This is a one input version and all the others are two inputs or binary gates. So, this is a unary gate right inverter. So, some points about combinational logic design and the design starts with the problem description which is in English right, Y is 1, if A is 1 and on B or C are 1 for example, we can write it in English, but not both or all are ones. So, then we translate it into basically a truth table. So, this English statement is translated into the truth table. After that, we write the output equations, right. It is basically SOP which has been written, right, sum of sum of products. We can have either SOP or POS. Then we can use the K maps to find the minimize expressions for the outputs Y and the output Z. Once we have these simplified expressions, we can write the final net list or the logic gates diagram. This is our basically finalized design. And of course, we can also have an a logic circuit like this and we can apply inputs and find the outputs right. So, this can be one direction of analysis of logic gates. So, this is the design and we can move backwards starting from this and trying to obtain this when we are analyzing logic circuits. Now, some high level combinational components right multiplexer which selects one out of n inputs right and uh, s log of m is basically the, num the number of selection lines. If we have four inputs, so we will have two selection lines. If we have eight inputs, we will have three selection lines and so on. Then we have the decoder, decoder selects an output function is based on the inputs right and decoders can be different different types, decoders can be used to convert code from one to another. Again it is just a revision of the previous logic design concepts. Then we have the sum which can be the sum of the two inputs uh, and we can have the carry as well right. So, this is basically the n bit adder which is taking two inputs and generating the sum and the carry. Then we have the n bit comparator which comp compares the bits of a and b. So, if this basically if this less output is 1 it means a is less than b, if equal output is 1 it, it means if a is equal to b. If greater output is 1, it means A is greater than B. Then of course, we have this n bit uh, m function A L u, it has got two inputs and the function is selected by this uh, signal right. So, O would be A operated by B and O P or A O P is the operation, it can be plus minus multiplication division, it would be given by the S inputs. <coughs> 